Start by taking the seat off. You're going to need to fish out the wire connector underneath the seat. It's kind of buried down there, so you got to use your fingers to pull it up. There's some other cables in the way. Eventually, you'll get it. Pull this sleeve cover off, and then you'll expose this white connector. Click it, and then disconnect it. Then fish this wire through. You're going to pull it through the cable connectors there, and then undo this. You're going to pull the wire out. There's a little holder. Put some duct tape or masking tape over the frame holes in the back. When you undo the bolts holding the fender eliminator, you don't want them to wiggle into the tube. If they got stuck in there, they would rattle around forever. It would be super annoying. So put some tape over the end of those tubes. That way when you undo those 12 millimeter nuts, they won't accidentally slip. It's at an angle too, so gravity wants to pull the nuts into the tube. Just a really intelligent way to prevent that from happening. Here we want to use a 12 millimeter ratchet to undo the factory fender. It is uh, incredibly tightly attached, so these 12 millimeter bolts are hard to remove. You can see how the bolts break free with my Nebo tool. Uh, once they're loose, you just remove all four bolts, uh, set them aside. You're not going to be reusing these. You can save them with the original hardware if you ever want to reinstall it to make it OEM again. I put mine in a small plastic bag with the other screws from the OEM fender kit. Here you pull the assembly free, careful of the wire, you're going to need to thread it through the hole in the back of the bike. Just push it through there. This is the license plate, it's a temporary deal, that's a plastic uh, bolt and nut combo. Uh, the dealer sets that up when you buy the bike. I haven't received the original plates yet, so this is just a temporary thing. I re reinstalled the nuts into there uh, just to keep from misplacing them. This is a retainer screw on the rear assembly. Uh, you have to remove this to free the subframe. It's an, an, another incredibly tight Phillips. Um, it's uh, longer than you might expect to. You're going to want to remove this uh, to free the subframe. There's four more Phillips screws in the back um, attaching the trim piece to the underside of the rear frame. If you notice that my parts are dirty, uh, that's because this grom has been ridden in the rain. Uh, rain deposits small amounts of dirt and road debris onto the underside of the fairing there. That trim piece and the associated housing have uh, just a light amount of dirt. There's nothing toxic or poisonous. After you remove these four Phillips screws, um, the rear trim piece will be loose, though removing it from the housing isn't as easy as it sounds. I tried starting out at the front here. It doesn't want to come undone. It, you just feel a lot of resistance, I, quite a bit of force. You try going at the front, still a lot of resistance. Kind of hard to, to remove it from there. I ended up uh, lifting it into the air so I could apply more torque to the, the trim piece and eventually it pops free. You want to remove this zip tie connector, it's a reusable type to get access to this wire loom. You're going to pull the connector through that. This is where the turn signals are connected to the wire bus. I use a pair of pliers from my electrical box here to kind of bend the little connectors. They're brass. You could pull them out with your fingers. Needle nose pliers would be really useful for removing this type of connector. The idea is to wiggle it free. You're not trying to bend the bracket and you're certainly not trying to bend the insertion point and careful not to rip the wire out of the brass housing. The whole point of this is to wiggle it free. I actually squeeze the pliers through the plastic tube to protect the connectors. Remember, you're just trying to wiggle the connectors free. Keep track of which goes to which. Orange is for the left, blue is for the right. The two green wires are the ground. Now that those are free, you can remove the uh, taillight assembly. But first, you're going to have to remove the metal subframe. There's more screws. After you remove these four screws,
the subframe housing will technically be free, though it's actually quite difficult to remove from the upper fairing assembly. This metal subframe adds strength to this elongated rear assembly. Um, there's these elevated plastic risers that the screws uh, screw into through the metal housing. And after you remove the wiring harness uh, from this housing, you're going to make sure every time you're pushing wires through holes, you're going to need to fold over those, those uh, grommet flashings and the, the protective sleeves. Um, I just twist them and fold them, fold them in half and then twist and like this you just push the, the, the connector through the hole. It's helpful if you space everything out. If you try to pull too many things through the hole at the same time, it makes more bulk. So you just fold those covers and then after they clear, you push the connector through. This, uh, this bolt that retains the metal bracket is incredibly hard to remove. I struggled with this one. This one was really hard. It's an eight millimeter bolt just above the OEM license holding assembly. I had to put my body weight into it and really get after it and it finally broke free. Um, this was actually the hardest part of the entire procedure. It's the most mechanically intensive um, before warned that you're gonna need to give that some effort. Finally, that uh, that bolt, it's a flanged 8 millimeter bolt, uh, comes free. This will enable you to remove the metal subframe. There's the metal subframe. It's kind of tricky. Once you get it to pop, the trick is to bend the plastic on both sides. Eventually you can get the risers to pop out of the metal and then it, it liberates. I didn't capture that on film, sadly. Uh, I used a crescent wrench. A 14 millimeter box wrench would be a lot better. I didn't have one. Uh, it's lost and moving. Make sure you save the washer and the flanged 14 millimeter nut. You're going to need that to reinstall the turn signals onto the fender eliminator kit. Do that for the left and right. Remember orange and green are the left and blue and green are the right. After those pull free, uh, you're making sure to save the hardware. You don't need that metal bracket though that came off. The two metal brackets can be saved. This is the license plate holder. You're going to remove these uh, these nuts from in here. Uh, there's a stud on the license plate holder itself. It's not very tight. I was able to do it with just my fingers and the extension. Now you're going to try to thread the connector through the hole. This is the same procedure. You got to fold everything and pull it through. Same with these covers, you're going to push, fold and push them through, fold and push it through. It's, you got to just fold it in half like that and then push it through. You'll find that you're doing that quite a bit. You want to save these little offset um, risers, they're a metal riser. You're going to want to install a washer on the riser too. The Fender Eliminator Kit includes the washer. That helps to tighten up the license plate lamp holder assembly. The OEM configuration is a little loose. You're also going to save that plastic grommet. The plastic grommet is um, important uh, as a bushing to prevent rubbing and bobbling. When you go to insert that into the fender eliminator, kind of squeeze the back side. You're trying to get that grommet on the back side of that gasket to go through. I just pick at it with my finger and that helps the flashing on the back side loosen up so that the the bushing can actually go through the hole and emerge on the other side to make a nice fitting. You want to straighten that up after you do that so it's all flush. Then you insert the risers. I wiggle and twist them while they're going through. There's three little knobs inside the, the bushing um, that will push out the bushing when you're inserting the risers. I decided to change out the lamp in the uh, license plate lamp holder. It's a uh, 2825 or 2528 incandescent 12 volt 5 watt lamp. I decided to put a 1 watt LED into this assembly. It's brighter, more energy efficient, they last a lot longer. You just undo these two Phillips assemblies. Um, then you, once you're done with that, you thread it back into the fender eliminator, put the nuts back on. 
you, t you want to tighten those down, you don't want it to vibrate free, then we want to insert the turn signals. There's a flat edge on the, the seating part of the turn signal that goes into an oblonged flat edge of the fender eliminator. Go ahead and get it kind of roughly lined up and then you can tighten the nut to firm it into place. It kind of pulls into the bracket and seats. It's a nice snug seat so nothing will vibrate free. Uh, you can't really insert it hand tight though. The nut tightening it down really pulls the, the fitting into the bracket. You gotta put the grommet over the cable. This is possibly one of the more annoying points. You gotta roll the grommet over every part of the cable. The idea is this grommet um, is going to prevent wires from rubbing in this upper assembly. So when you feed the wires through there, there's an oval hole and that grommet's gonna go into the oval hole to protect the wires from the cutout in the metal. When you push the grommet through, it's helpful to kind of fold the grommet and push around the edges. Um, I even use a screwdriver there to push it through at the end. Then you wiggle the wires around. You want to line them up so the left goes through the right and the right goes through the left. Once it's in there, you're going to want to tighten it so that it looks nice and snug like that. Now you got to reconnect the wire harness. Um, so these little brass fittings that you removed earlier, you're going to want to wiggle them back into place. Make sure you can push with your finger. Make sure they go all the way into the hole. It's absolutely important that they seat all the way. That'll keep them from vibrating free. These are the wires that go to your turn signals, so you want them to work. You want the connection to be nice and snug. That way when you signal, people behind you can get a proper safety warning of which direction you're going in. So make sure you plug those in all the way. All right, so remember to match the colors up, orange to orange, blue to blue, and then the big connector takes both the greens. That's the ground. Once you get all of these uh, inserted, double check, make sure they're all correct, and then you're going to slide that boot over those and make sure that that looks correct. Now you're going to feed the wire assembly back into the rear fender and the fender eliminator. You're going to pull that whole loom through. It's the same thing. you got to fold those connectors to shove them through the hole, just like you've done before. There's four bolts on the fender eliminator that line up where the OEM holes were. They're 12 millimeter threaded studs. As you uh, seat that, it'll kind of click into place. Then install a nut and then finger tighten it on one of the studs. Then install another nut onto the other stud. And you want to kind of just finger, just get them snug with your finger. Um, do that for all four so that everything's nice and, and snug and held in place. And that's what I'm doing here. Easier said than done. It's, it's kind of tight in the seat there. If you've got large fingers, I'm a six foot tall male that can be kind of snug. Now I use the extension rod with the 12 millimeter socket to just kind of finger tight it with the rod. Then I'm going to apply my wrench and kind of just rough tighten them. Just snug, nothing tight. And then we're going to tighten them down, cross pattern. So you go crisscross, and then that's round one. We're going to do it one more time because you don't want this to vibrate free. You're going to make sure they're nice and snug. Don't over tighten them, but just tighten up. Now we've got to snake this wiring loom back into the fitting. The turn signal wires are now there so that the whole thing's not going to fit the way it did originally. But um, just do your best to to organize the wires into the hole. You want to reconnect that main connector and then slide that cover back over the connector. And then I folded the wires under the rear fender. There's a right there. And then I decided to push just the brake light into that bracket holder. Remounting the temporary license plate um, just to make sure that it's road legal and uh, that varies by state to state, but you have to display some kind of tag so your vehicle can be identified. I turn the bike on and then test the turn signal. The left one's working, the right one's working. Everything worked. Turn the bike back off, reinstall the seat. Make sure you click it firm. It'll click into place and then you can see here the original uh, rear extension pairing is quite bulky. 
and it's uh, now much cleaner. Fender Eliminator.